What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're going to be taking you guys around the garden and picking a bunch of stuff because it's harvest day. Let's go. All right, so as you saw, we have some huge potatoes. So the first thing that Taylor and I are gonna get are our Cunnebecks. Now these took a little while longer to, uh, to come to full maturity because they are a late potato. So we're gonna see what we got for the rest of these. These are looking amazing. I wanted to get these out of the ground because they are, uh, they're very prone to rot. And so because we had so much rain and there's so much more rain left in the forecast, um, I don't want to, I don't want to risk losing them. So we've got these beautiful potatoes here. And I will say size wise, incredible, like really incredible. This is a, this is a very, very nice sized kind of potato. And a lot of you have asked me, how come you don't hill your potatoes? And I've said, you don't need to hill your potatoes as long as you have super deep, loose soil for the roots to go down. And this is proof positive. I don't have any potatoes on the soil surface. There's no green potatoes that we're harvesting and all the potatoes that we're getting are below the soil. So I do not hill my potatoes and they do just fine. Again, if you have very hard soil, sometimes what you'll find is the potatoes will kind of come to the surface a little bit. And then in those cases, you'll have green potatoes. So in those cases, I recommend usually covering the plants or covering the rows with just some straw. You don't have to hill your potatoes. There's no benefit to hilling your potatoes other than keeping the potatoes that do form out of the sun. You're not gonna get any more potatoes from hilling. Look, look, oh, oh, <laughs> wow, you guys, check that out. That's a huge potato. That is probably the largest potato I've ever grown. Incredible. That sucker is huge. Man, oh man, what a good haul. Yeah. That's uh, impressive. Yeah, you just know for next year to plant more. Uh, Way more Kennebex. Yeah. A lot more Kennebex for sure. That's so crazy. But like, look at the soil. I mean, the soil, you guys, is such a testament to healthy plants. I've always said a healthy garden starts with healthy soil, and this is absolutely no exception. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, Taylor? Like, look at the soil is so loose and crumbly. Even though we've had lots of rain, yeah. it is just incredible looking. So incredible. Ooh, that one got a little soft on me though. That's a bummer. How big that one would have been? Probably almost as big as the other one, but we got a little bit of rot on it. It started to get soft. So unfortunately this one will not make the cut. So. Let's go into the compost pile in the sky. So, wow. From just two rows of Kennebecs, we filled up an entire wheelbarrow of potatoes. Again, not disclosing how much, uh, how large the wheelbarrow is, but um, that is actually impressive. That's probably, I would say, and it's a shame because that other giant one was probably almost two pounds, two and a half pounds for that one potato. But I think total yield from just two rows was probably somewhere 15, 20 pounds of potatoes. So that's incredible. I mean, truly incredible yield from just two rows. That was only six plants, that's it. So um, 15 pounds from six plants, awesome. So now we got some cucumbers to harvest, some tomatoes to harvest, some cabbage, kale. Let's get going, there's lots to do. All right, our cucumber plants have loved this rain. Now generally I'd be concerned about things like powdery mildew, but because we've been spraying with uh, baking soda spray, We've had no powdery mildew despite having record amounts of rain this summer. But because of that, the cucumbers are doing incredibly well. We've gotten already probably close to 20 pounds of cucumbers this year, and we just keep getting more. We harvested some yesterday and some the day before that, and we've been getting about three to five cucumbers per day almost. There's just tons of them in here. They just keep forming and they just keep coming. These are the straight eight cucumbers. We also have just over here, I think there's a couple we have to harvest and those are the tender green. I'll show you those. There's a huge difference between the tender greens and the straight eights, but I love them both because they're equally delicious. But these are more of like a pickling cucumber. Also quick tip, when your cucumbers get like this, this is actually caused from heat or drought. 
this stress is actually from improper pollination. The cucumber flower was not properly pollinated and so it gets a little bit of a deformity. You wanna still harvest it though, because if you don't harvest your cucumbers, even when they're small like this, the diameter is what you look for, not necessarily the size. This is another case like this, right? The diameter was telling me, and the color was also telling me it was time to harvest. If I didn't get off the plant, it would actually shut down production for this entire plant. So you wanna get, you wanna pick them, harvest early, harvest often, and that way production stays going. So now we've got our tender greens. These tender greens are one of my favorite cucumbers of all time because they are basically your, your ideal kind of greenhouse cucumber. Here's a perfect example of one. This one is a little small, but I wanna harvest early and harvest often. Check this out. Look at how beautiful that is. Totally spineless. These are such a smooth, straight cucumber. They make awesome cucumbers for things like salads. Um, here's another one, not quite fully ready, but we'll still get it. Look at that, absolutely incredible. They do get longer than that. The few in here that got a tad bit longer that I saw, one right over here. Still about the same size, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Tender green is one of my all time favorites. You just can't beat the flavor. But these plants are loaded with cucumbers. I think there's some on the back side of this plant too. So I think I've got some on the back side of this plant here. Yep, I do. I've got some, some more. Check that out, absolutely incredible. There's one down here. Another one. You always wanna make sure you check the plant really well. Cucumbers are one of those ones that they creep up on you. They form and then they ripen within just a couple of days. And if you miss them, you're gonna end up kind of like with, uh, with zucchini, same thing. You're gonna end up with oversized cucumbers that are really seedy and once they form, again, once they form seeds and they get too overripe, you're not gonna wanna eat them and it shuts down production on the plant. But we have lots more cucumbers forming, tons more growth. Growth is still nice and green. Plants are obviously still very healthy. No signs of powdery mildew. We're gonna keep spraying preventatively for that powdery mildew and hopefully we're gonna keep getting cucumbers like this. All right, so we actually have so much going on in this bed that's ready to harvest. We have our cherry tomatoes. These are beautiful, so delicious. These are the, uh, the sweetie cherry tomatoes. We also have the Tess's Landry's currant just next door. Those are starting to ripen up, but these are beautiful. I love, just love the trusses of flowers on them. They're perfect. And then we also have some beans. The rabbits have definitely ravaged the green beans this year. So we actually have a fall planting of green beans as well as some pole beans that are hopefully gonna fare a little bit better, but we got some green beans, enough for a consolation snack, but we're gonna be getting a lot more. I'm not worried about it. This was just because we had, we had high hopes to have green beans in between each uh, row of tomatoes as kind of an intercropping, but because the rabbits got to them early, it got too hot to plant more. So now that's cooling off, we are planting more, but the ones that survived are producing. So we got some green beans. We also have our federally tomatoes. Now, because we have some more rain in the forecast, I'm gonna pick these. These are huge. Look at these paste tomatoes. Look at this. They're just starting to blush right now. So they are gonna be fine. We're gonna take them aside, finish ripening them up on the counter. But these are massive. One of my favorite paste tomatoes of all time. We've got a couple of those. Gorgeous, gorgeous tomatoes. All right, so check it out. We got our Supernova grape tomatoes. These are so pretty. I absolutely love just the, uh, they look like they're on fire. They have a, a kind of a bicolored yellow red color to them. They're actually relatively low acid. I love them because they're so great in things like salads or even fresh eating, but they rarely make it in, inside because they're so delicious. But then I also have, they're not ripe yet. We got these beautiful, uh, these, these are the butterneck squash. Butterneck squash is a variety of squash we've been kind of cultivating out over the past three or four years now. It essentially started as a mutation from a, from a um, butternut squash where the neck of the squash got really, really long. And uh, so we actually started saving seeds from it and we've been breeding out those seeds and we have a ton of them in our garden, but they are absolutely amazing. Really small seed cavity huge long neck on them. So you get a lot to harvest from them, but there's two giant ones right there that I'm gonna let them be. But that's about all the tomatoes from right here that I have to harvest. Next, I've got quite a few tomatoes over in that bed. All right, so we're here with our beefsteak bed and I'll tell you what, this is incredible. 
We have over here, this is the, uh, this is the Rosa de Bern, one of my all-time favorite beefsteak tomatoes. It is a Swiss variety of tomato, but so pretty. Really, really love this. It is a tad bit prone to cracking, so even though they're still a little green, I am gonna harvest them because we're supposed to be getting some more rain pretty soon. And this tomato plant has been producing lots of fruit for us. This is just one of, I think, three harvests so far from this plant. This over here, this is the Kellogg's breakfast. I think we're gonna have a record-sized tomato on this plant. I'm thinking it's probably pushing close to two pounds. It is huge. And I also have back here, I believe this is an Ananas Noir or black pineapple. Um, it is ripe, starting to blush, but it's really cat-faced on the bottom. So uh, this one will go in, sit on the counter, and we'll get this one uh, to ripen up on the counter, but it's pretty cat-faced. So sometimes you get that with heirlooms. That's from multiple blooms uh, kind of fusing together. And there is just so many more tomatoes. There's also over here, this one. This is the, the trophy tomato. Beautiful, incredible. Look at this, absolutely gorgeous, great size. This is gonna ripen up to be a nice red as well. But again, with this rain, I don't want cracking. Cracking is uh, one of the worst things because it just shortens the lifespan or the life expectancy, um, or the shelf life, I should say, of your fruit by like half. So we're gonna get them before they crack, take them aside, write them up on the counter. All right, so we're gonna rapid fire through the rest of these that we're gonna harvest here. We got our cabbage. This is an incredible, head of cabbage here, that beautiful, nice tight head of cabbage. We got that. We also have some collards. These collards are beautiful. We're gonna steam these up. Gorgeous collard greens. I love these. I found such a new love for collards when I cook them the right way. Once they're cooked the right way, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Brussels sprouts. If they're cooked wrong, they just taste like crap. But I'll tell you what, cooked right, they are incredible. So we're gonna take some of these. Beautiful, absolutely incredible. We got some kale here. We've been really hooked on making some crispy kale chips with these, with our lacinato kale. Beautiful. Get some more of these. Also, we've been drying it in our dehydrator and then grinding it into a, a powder and using it as like basically like green supplements for things like smoothies. Really, really nice to add in those, in those, uh, in those areas. But this, look at this, <laughs> how, long, look how long this leaf is. That is incredible, absolutely amazing. All right, we got some peppers to harvest as well. So check it out. All right, so we do have some jalapenos. Uh, the jalapenos are super laden. Look at these plants, check this out. Absolutely amazing. We've got jalapenos and we gotta get the bigger ones on this plant so we can keep producing. But we've got tons of jalapenos. We also have lots of serranos. Look at these, oh my gosh, look at these plants. They are absolutely loaded, you guys. Totally loaded with peppers. I'll come back and pick some more. There's lots on that plant. There's also some of these serranos. These serranos are beautiful. They're gonna start ripening up any day, but they are loaded up. These plants are just laden with serranos. Check it out, oh my gosh. There's probably over 100, and the amount of blossoms on these plants are crazy. We have some gorgeous, uh, these are the, the New Mexico, uh, the New Mex Joe Parker peppers. Absolutely loaded, you guys, loaded. I'll pick one green, but they're gonna start to ripen. This one's just starting to blush a little bit, but they're gonna turn nice deep red. I'll leave the rest on the plant to get nice and ripe, but they are absolutely stunning. So pretty, I mean, just loaded on this plant. We also have over here the Tabascos. They are not ready yet. Then we also have the, uh, the, the Peckin peppers, and these are not even close to ripe yet, but they have tons. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of itty bitty little peppers on these plants. Check it out, that's incredible. So these are all gonna be ripening up in the next couple weeks, and we're gonna be getting lots. The sweet potatoes are looking nice too. The rabbits keep getting to them. We're gonna have to put some cages around these plants to get them to, uh, to keep growing, but we're really gonna be getting some sweet potato production pretty soon. But that is about it. Oh, actually one more thing. We're gonna harvest some more carrots and some more beets. Let's go. 
All right, check this out. This is awesome. These beets are huge. Let's get some good ones in here. Now we multi-sowed these beets. That was the process of planting several plants all closely together. Look at this, absolutely incredible. We've harvested, I would say from these three rows of beets, probably close to 20 to 30 beets. And they are all absolutely stunning. The more we harvest, the more it allows the smaller ones to continue to grow. And these are just gorgeous. I am so happy with how our beets turned out this year. Sometimes they can be a little bit hit or miss. This year was definitely a good year for beets. Also, I wanna get some carrots, but I'm gonna get these beets here. We're gonna roast these up with tonight's dinner. Look how big that one is. Look at that, absolutely <laughs> incredible production, you guys, incredible. There is just nothing stopping these plants. They are <laughs> amazing, amazing. I'm really, really happy with these, uh, with these beets here. Grown 100% organically with just compost, native soil, and trifecta. That's it, no secrets. All right, now let's get some carrots. These carrots are gonna be beautiful. Uh, if you guys saw our last video, our video a couple videos ago, I should say, where we harvested some carrots to talk about how we got perfect carrots. If you haven't seen that video, you're definitely gonna wanna check it out because you too can be growing carrots like this. These are just dynamite. We've been enjoying these for about the past couple weeks now. These are the Danvers 126 carrot, and they just look incredible, you guys. Look at this, absolutely amazing. I cannot tell you how much of a blessing these have been because these have gone in soups. They've been eaten fresh. We've juiced them. We've roasted them. Oh, they are just incredible. These are beautiful. So we are so happy with the carrots this year. Could not be happier. And we're gonna be planting even more for the fall. So we gotta get these harvested because then we're gonna make room for a fall planting somewhere in here. All right, we got two more things that we're harvesting right here. One of them is the Lucilla Swiss chard. This thing is incredible. We have so much of it growing here. And what I love is I love planting it really closely together because what it does is it forces the stalks to get nice and long like this. What we use these stalks for is a celery replacement. I'm actually allergic to celery. I was diagnosed with, with what was called uh, oral allergy syndrome. And basically certain things my mouth just rejects. Things like raw apples, raw carrots, raw celery. Uh, so the carrots were growing for, for the other people in the household, in the Emma Gardner household, not for me. Um, I can have them cooked, just not raw. But one of my favorite snacks is celery with peanut butter. And I couldn't ever eat it for the longest time until I discovered that Swiss chard has an exact same texture and flavor to celery. So it has the same stringiness when it gets mature as celery does. Has the same kind of sweet saltiness that celery has. It is just incredible. It is one of my all time favorites in the garden. I love it for that. So we got lots of celery. <laughs> and then we also have some endive here. Check this out, look at this. I already harvested this, but look at this. Beautiful, beautiful endive, incredible plant. Love the color, love that, that rosy purple color. Just incredible. So we're gonna take that in. And then one final thing, we've got our summer crisp pears coming in. One of my favorite, all time favorite pear varieties. Check it out. All right, and we have Finally, our summer crisp pear. This is one of the last things in the garden we have to harvest. And there's so, so many of them up tall in this tree. I'm gonna have to get a fruit picker to get some of these down, but these are incredible. I absolutely love these. These are the best snack you could ever ask for in the garden. Just incredible. So good. This plant or this tree is absolutely loaded. We got some way up there. I'm gonna have to buy a fruit picker to get these down, but wow, this is an A plus pear. One of my all time favorites. If you've never grown a summer crisp pear, you've gotta try it. It feels or it tastes kind of like a cross between a Asian pear, an apple, and a pear. It is so incredible. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. We're inspired to grow some di different things in your garden. If you did enjoy, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care. Bye.